Hi folks, thanks for joining me. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, please think about clicking that subscribe button. I would really appreciate your support. What you see in the vice then is a competition cormorant variation. So without further ado, let's get into it. So probably the first thing you notice uh, about the hooking device is it has a barb. Now I still fish the very occasional competitions and they have a catch and kill phase and for that phase you are allowed to fish barbed hooks. So I do have a few in a box that I keep for that purpose and the hook in the vice is a Hanak H266 it's at size 10, it's on a heavy wire and it's in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using is from Sempify and it's the Nano Silk in 12 volt. And as always with the Nano Silks, before I do anything else, I'm just going to get a little bit of super glue onto the shank of the hook. And then I can use my thread to spread that up and down the shank before catching in just behind the eye and laying a bed of silk down onto the shank of the hook. Now I'm going to bring it up to the barb and then remove my waist. Now, the rib I'm going to be using is from uh, Flybox, it's Ma Magic Tinsel, it's a combo pack. So basically what you get, this is the red, you get um, some strands at 132 of an inch and some strands at 1 16th of an inch. I'm using the smaller of the two, the 132, and I've already got a little bit out the packet ready to go. Now, there's two sides to this, I don't know how well you'll be able to see it on the camera, but there's a shiny good side, what I would call a good side, and there's a dull red side. Now, both have got their uses, but on this occasion, I want the shiny good side to be on the fly. So I'm going to hold the shiny good side towards the shank of the hook and catch that in with a couple of turns. And then I'm going to come up my body and I'm going to stop approximately a quarter of an inch and then I'm going to bring this up and this, the thing with this uh, magic ribbon thing is you can put quite a lot of pressure onto it it's very robust if you pull it tight enough it actually turns into a, a solid rib uh, before it will snap on you so I'm just taking my time and bringing that up to meet my thread and once it's met my thread I'm going to trap it into place with a couple of turns on the material itself and then a couple of turns in front. Now I'm not going to snip this away because it's, it's going to continue on to be my rib so what I want to do is pull it back the good side down onto the shank and just trap that in so it sits sits for you. Now it's, it, it's bouncing up because of the way it was folded on the car, but that's sitting okay. Next then, I'm gonna bring in some peacock herald and I've got some uh, black dyed peacock herald here. Just take two strands, that's all you need. Now peacock herald is always weak at the tip, so if you think you're gonna have an issue, just snap off the tip. Uh, and that saves it snapping while you've tied it into the fly. So I'll just use my, my finger to move that out the way for the moment and catch them two strands in. And I'm going to bring my silk up to about an eighth of an inch before the eye. And then I can come in with my peacock herald just slick it back like you would do with Fritz and, and that is quite annoying it keeps springing back it's taunting me, taunting me I tell you <laughs> but just uh, persevere with it, it's worth it the effect you get from this is superb so I'll bring it all the way up and I'm going to stop where my thread is and get a turn in to hold that into position 
and then I'm going to get several wraps in front of the, the peacock herald. Now I'm tempted just to pull this away, but I'm not going to because it's probably going to cause me a world of hurt. So I'll come in with the scissors and just remove my peacock herald. So next you can grab this now, which has been quite annoying, and bring that round like a ribbon. You want really three tons, but it, you might not get that. You might only get two. But I think I've just managed to sneak in three tons. I'm pulling it quite tight. And then I'm going to, again, trap it into position with my silk. A couple of tons. And then a couple of tons in front. I can come in and remove my magic tinsel. And what I want to do now, at this point is just whip finish off my nano silk for the moment we'll come back to that in a bit take that away and I'll put that to the side so the little orange spot you seen uh, in the fly when I had it in the vise you'll notice that there was a there was a little hot spot just um, there so we're going to create that next and the way we do it is we've got some glow bright number five in a bobbin holder and I'm going to slick as much of the peacock herald back as I can and what I want to do is just build a very small bump now once you've got several turns in you can grab your waist end and snap it away now that's as much as I want, so what I'm going to do next is come to the front and I'm going to use my whip finish tool just to finish that off. Three turns is all it takes because what we're going to do next is get some UV resin on that which will dull the the glow bright down a little which is what I want for this pattern so I'll come in with some Solaris and I'm just going to touch that around my glow bright be careful not to get too much of it onto your peacock herald you want that little bit of movement in there once that's into place Zap it with your torch. And then get your nano silk back onto the fly. Okay. So I've got that on with a couple of turns and I'm going to just come in and remove that bit of waste. Now, I don't know how closely you managed to see the original fly in the vise, but I'm just opening up my thread there, and what I'm going to do is add the tiniest amount of African goat dub. And if you haven't got African goat, don't be overly worried. Seals fur is, is, does exactly the same thing. And I've already got a small amount in my, my little clip here that I've took out but I know that that's probably too much already but I can always pluck it out once I've created my dub and loop so once you get your thread opened up just come in with the, behind the nano silk with your needle and it should flatten out nicely for you and then you can open up a small loop within your thread. Now you need to get this up as close to the fly as you can and then trap it in. So I'm going to just bring my thread up, it just keeps it under a bit more control and I'm going to spin that up. Nice and tight. Now, as I said, I knew when I was putting it in, it was going to be far too much. So I'm going to come in now with my fingers and just thin that out. 
want it really sparse. It's just, uh, it gives it a little bit of added movement. I don't know what fish take it for, legs maybe, whatever, but it's, uh, it's, it's an absolutely super deadly little fly, this. And uh, one for the comp guys, really. You definitely want this in your box. So I brought that round and I brought my thread to the front of the hook. So it's looking quite buggy. And if I was of a mind to, I could just bring in a soft hackle actually and fish this as a wet. But obviously as it's a cormorant style fly, I want to generate as much movement as possible. For the wing then, I'm going to be using some comp candy. Uh, this is the blackjack marabou. I've already got a feather that I've been working with here. And what I want to do is just take a thumbnail's worth of the marabou. I like to have my wing nice and sparse. I know some folks like it a bit thicker, but I like it nice and sparse. I'm just giving it a little twist so when I cut it away it doesn't go all over the place. And I'm going to damp down my ends just to tidy that up. Now before I tie it in, a little bit of wax always helps just to grip the material. And then I can bring that in over the eye. Missed it the first time, caught it the second time. Now once you've got it into place, you can clamp right down on that, especially with a bit of wax on there, it just helps to secure it into place. And then you can concentrate on building up a nice thick head. So what you've got there is your little bit of orange there, give it a little hint of orange, you've got the, the dubbing giving it a bit of leggy motion if you like, and obviously that tinsel just shown through, looks fantastic. Now I'm going to finish off with a whip finish before I uh, come in and remove my tail, if I can find my whip finish tool. Now I've got, uh, I don't know if you can see it, it's on my side. I've got uh, a little bit of the African goat sticking itself out the front there. I want to remove that before I come in and finish it with some uh, UV resin. So distance wise, uh, I've been doing it for so long, I just know that if I pinch it at the back here like that, I'm not a million miles away for comp legal. Uh, and I'll obviously check that against my measure later before it goes in the box. So slick everything back out the way and then come in with your head cement or in this case um, UV resin. And you can see as I'm turning the fly, that little orange hot spot that we tied in earlier really shows up from underneath, which is uh, exactly what I want. Give it a zap. And uh, what I'll do is this will go in my barbed hook box. Uh, it, it fishes great in a team, so if you're fishing a team of these, uh, this would certainly be on my cast at some point, and it will fish anywhere. The point, the middle, top dropper doesn't matter, this is, a, this is a fish taker all day. And I'll tie, obviously, the same fly in barbless, because after you get to your four fish limit, um, you either crush the barb down, or you use barbless hooks. I'm not very confident with crushed barbs, so I like to use manufactured barbless hooks after the catch and kill phase is finished. I hope that was of some use to you. Some really interesting techniques in there that you can maybe adopt. You don't have to use orange. You can use green perhaps. Uh, and, I, and I do use green actually. It works very well. But um, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about clicking that button. I would really appreciate your support.